Hello everyone, welcome back to another episode of Play on GAA. This is another episode of the Club Roundup and this is a hurling edition. Luke, we'll start with the Tipperary Club Hurling Championship. So Luke, Lockmore, Boris Lee, Turles Sarsfields and Killadangan are into the Tipperary Hurling semi-finals. We'll start with the Lockmore versus Turles Sarsfields game because that has one of the most, you know, the stats that kind of jumps out at you straight away as soon as you see it. I watched the game myself. John McGrath, four goals and six points. Fantastic performance from him. He was outstanding, particularly in the first half. He looked deadly. And yeah, a fantastic win for Lockmore over Kilroy and McDonough's. Yeah, look, absolutely. I think uh, coming into this game, a lot of teams, a lot of people are actually tipping kind of Kilroy on to win it. They have, uh, they have a lot of kind of county stars, like a lot of them that are kind of like, they're not probably like the first names of the team sheet, but it's a solid team. If you think about kind of the likes of Keane Darcy, Niall Amara, Jerome Cahill, Craig Morgan as well, players that are really on the tip, kind of been on their thereabouts in the tip team, but just haven't really made a breakthrough. So I think a lot of people were thinking that Kilruan might do a, uh, might do a job and lock more, but ultimately, look, yeah, that the first half performance from John McGrath essentially won the game for them. And uh, albeit maybe if uh, Hill Ruan had a probably, probably slightly more rounded team, I think the, the star power of McGrath, I think, and, uh, and John Maher, of course, as well for Lockmore Castellani, I think pretty much got them over the line in the end. Yeah, well, to score four goals in the first half is absolutely ridiculous. Like the, the level of which this guy is at. No McGrath is obviously in that team as well for Lockmore. He's a fantastic player, has been ever since he made his debut for the senior side. Moving into the, the other game, Boris Lee, they left it late to get past Mullen at home. And they're inspired really by Owen Kelly still going at the age of 39. But, you know, it wasn't enough for Mullen at home. Boris Lee, extra time he was needed to get them past Mullen at home. They got a few late scores. And they win out by two points. What did you make of this game? Yeah, look, I think, well, obviously, the uh, the, the big storyline from it probably was that Owen Kelly still kind of, uh, still kind of so dominant, uh, like, even at that level. But, yeah, look, I think it's uh, it, it's a good win for, for Barca Lee. They came up against a really, really tough kind of challenge. And, look, they have the pedigree of being previous champions as well. And, they, look, that team is still kind of there or thereabouts. Like, they still have Brendan Maher going to the team and everything as well. Like, I know they've lost him from the from the county panel as well, but he's still going. Jerry Kelly's still in there as well. And, look, there's, there's, it's still a very, very strong team. Yeah, look, it's it's going to be uh, very, it's, it's gonna be very interesting watching them kind of progress in, in the uh, as it goes on because, like, absolutely, you know, they still have kind of a team that can look to contend as well. We haven't talked about Dan McCormick yet. They have him around midfield in there too. So between him and Brennan Maher, Dan McCormick, with Jerry Kelly all front around that middle, that's a very, very kind of – there's some great pedigree around that team. And, uh, yeah, look, they uh, – and still, look, that game's going to stamp them as well. The fact that they're pushed so, so hard in this and they really have to work for it. So, yeah, I think uh, it's a good result for, uh, for Barca League. 100%. Moving on to the, the next game, Turles Sarsfields. They won by two goals and 19 points to one goal and 14 points over Clonulty Ross Moore. Turles Sarsfields, big names in their team. Obviously, they've Parag Mar, they've Ronan Mar, they've Pa Burke, they've Michael Cahill, who plays in midfield for them. They uh, they were 7 3 up with the first water break. Clonulty kind of came back into it. Obviously, Connor Hammersley and Timmy Hammersley are their key players, really. Two 11 to eight points at the break. Then Clonulty roared back into it in the third quarter. Like Timmy Hammersley finished with nine points. He was fantastic. It was 2-13 to 13 points at the next water break. And then Turles Arfield just kind of took over, saw themselves home. And yeah, they're into the semifinals as well now. Yeah, look, uh, well, we talked about kind of with Boris Ali kind of getting an almighty kind of test and uh, a bit of a scare kind of in that. Like this is probably the opposite here. And that Turles managed to... Uh, pretty much ultimately like dispatch a previous county winner like it's not we're not too far off from multi winning kind of in uh in tip so it's a yeah look it's a it's a it's a bit it's a very good win for uh for Turles I think the bit that stood out to me nearly most of it was just how dominant Ronan Maher was at this level and like he was nearly allowed to play kind of as a free roll kind of sweeping up and uh the, the ball just seemed like a magnet to him and that everything just pretty much hit him and uh yeah look he, he just he hovered up uh ball all day in that defence and came out with it, laid it off very, very effectively as well, took his penalty very well, finished with one two. So look, I thought he was absolutely superb as well. Aiden McCormick as well, former tip player as well. 
still looks like he could be a player that could feature for Tip, to be honest. So I think he look. I've seen him play National League games before where he's finished up with five or six points for Tip. And so it's a bit surprising he's never kind of made the, the ultimate step up as well. But look, he looks to be flying too. And I think Stephen Cahill as well was the other big plus for them midfield, hitting three points. He was very, very good. Like, although... Penalty did cause some problems when the two Hammersleys were inside. I think they dealt with it fairly, fairly well. Uh, Ultimate probably Mar kind of he kind of he didn't probably have his greatest every game, but look, I think he grew into it more so. And then they pretty much stuffed it out. But yeah, look, very emphatic win for Turles. One hundred percent. And as for the last quarterfinal, Killadangan, who were the kingpins of Tipperary Hurl in two thousand and twenty, they beat Upper Church Drum Bane. Yeah, uh, I think look, this was this was a. A resounding, resounding win. And look, to be honest, I think I just think based off the four games of the weekend, I think Killadangan still have to be considered the favourites in here. I know that there are recent winners and everything like that as well. It might be a, a not the most exciting choice, but look, I don't think you can look past them right now. I think they're absolutely flying. And you look at that team, kind of. I think it's so strong that team. Like again, kind of like probably not. Uh, like the marquee names, I think, in, in the Tipperary team. But look, you look, there's Hogan in goal. You've got uh, J- James Quigley in fullback as well. But the two Flins as well, Alan Paul, Willie Connors in midfield. Billy Seymour is going to be featuring for Tip next year. I can guarantee you that. I think he's uh, he's just right on the verge of pretty much being a starter for Tip. And with the uh, kind of change in management and a good run for Kildang, and I'm pretty much convinced that he's going to be very, very close to starting for Tipperary next year. So between all them, I think they... Uh, I think they're absolutely kind of uh, they're they're a force to be reckoned with in tip as well. Look, it was impressive performance from from plenty of players around there as well. And uh, yeah, obviously Billy Seymour was top scorer of the day. He finished with a goal in seven, and that mostly were from freeze, but uh, he was still impressive. And as well, the other one that stand out was uh, Sean Hayes in the half forward line and Brian McLaughlin. So uh, yeah, look. Great win for Kildangan. And yeah, look, we got the draw done anyway for Tipperary. So it's setting up to be a very, very uh, entertaining, I suppose, semi final and final. I'm going to try to be watching as much of these remaining games because these four, they're all absolutely kind of top teams in, in Tipperary. And I, I think that like the best teams have literally made it to the, the latter stage of the competition. 100%. I can't wait to watch it as well. Moving on now from Tipperary Hurling to Dublin Hurling. The semi-finals have been announced. Chemical Crokes will play against Kula and Duke and Sarsfields will play against Nafina in the other side of the draw. Absolutely fantastic quarterfinals in the Dublin Hurling Championship. First of all, we're going to start with the Kula versus Bally Bowden game. Decided in extra time. Fantastic match. Yeah, completely. And look, I think that uh, the... Uh, I think a lot of people were kind of expecting extra time, I suppose, after kind of after the, the nervy kind of finished to normal time in the game and what kind of followed as well there. So, look, I think uh, the last couple of minutes were uh, were very, very nervy as well, kind of back and forward as well. And I suppose ultimately in the end, Cool's class just shown true, especially the David Tracy point, to put them one point up. I know they won't be two in the end, but the David Tracy point right in the, the right-hand sideline out there that it took a... Uh, took a huge amount of guts from, from Tracy to knock that over. And look, he was probably man of the match in the day. And uh, yeah, yeah, it was a fantastic score. And then I suppose it was later sealed by Conor Callahan. So look, I think after questions about Kula in the group stage where they were resoundingly beaten on the first day out, but uh, since then, look, they've kind of, they've slowly kind of dragged their way back into this championship. And then look, I didn't fancy them, to be honest, against against Bowden. I know they're injury hit right now and stuff like that as well. I thought that they might be just kind of too injury hit this year to be uh, to be contending in Dublin. But look, a win like that is going to bring them on miles. So uh, yeah, look, I think uh, they're going to, they've, they've been probably unlucky in the semi-final draw where they've got Kimco Croaks who... Uh, who are probably the favourites, I think, for the overall championships. If they're going to have to win, if you're going to win this championship, you're going to have to win it the hard way. But yeah, look, great win for them in the end. Yeah, and what did you make of the Chemical Croaks win? 126 to 19 points over a good Oliver Plunkett side, of course, featuring the likes of Keane Bowling, but Croaks just squashed them with a really emphatic win, in my opinion. Yeah, pretty much. And I think, like, I know that uh, 126 to 19, is a, it's a healthy enough score. I know there was a late, late goal from Alex Considine to kind of uh, to add to the scoreline, I think, even more so. But, uh, yeah, I think I do think that Croaks, you look at the talent kind of in that team as well and that the, the, the amount of kind of counter players that they have available to them, they've been uh, very dominant, I think, nearly in recent years, kind of in, uh, in club hurling. And, uh, yeah, look, I can't, I can't really see them 
been beat, to be honest, against uh, against Kula, to be honest. I know Kula have had this pedigree of being such a great club team and stuff, but I do think the Crokes have kind of gone to a next level kind of at the moment. And whereas Kula have slightly, slightly started to decline in recent years, I think, as well. So I know like that Conor Callan is back playing, and the more games he plays, the sharper he gets back playing Hurlan. But I will be leaning towards uh, Crokes in that game, I think. Yeah, I completely get where you're coming from with that. And then on the other side, Luke and Sarsfields and the Fina are also true to the semi-final. Who do you tip out of these two? Yeah, look, this is an interesting one because I think Nafina are the factor this year. I think that like they what well, the addition of Liam Rush that he's transferred from Pats of Palmerstown into that team. And that's a, it's an it's an almighty addition into a team, like to have a player that quality in there as well. And the other thing as well, this kind of the step up bit that's been made by Colin Curry and Sean Curry as well. Like, I suppose that was kind of, uh, Colin Curry pretty much won that game from the suppose in the end after, again, another scare for them. So, uh, yeah, look, I think it's, uh, yeah, they, 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 they seem to be a team that are really kind of on upward trajectory right, right now. And like with the forwards that they have with Donald Burke, AJ Murphy and stuff as well, like they've, it's a very, very talented team. So I, like, I was impressed by them, particularly in the group stage. I know they've made kind of hard work for it last week, but I would probably be leaning them over Luke. But although Luke could do a very good side, I think the two, the two crummies are where you kind of, look immediately as kind of their best players as well. But there's some very, very solid players in that team as well. So look, they're gonna get a tough L kind of battle, I suppose, Nafina. But I do think that Nafina are gonna are gonna come through us due to that kind of star power that they have in that team. And uh yeah, look, I think it's gonna set up a very, very interesting final where like it's been a while since we've seen a Nafina team competing for uh hurling championships in Dublin. So it's look it's pretty refreshing to see a new team kind of powering through this year. 100%. Um, moving on from the Dublin Championship now to the Clare one. The headline out of this, Shane O'Donnell's late goal. Brilliant win for Era Oganis. They knocked out the reigning Clare Hurling Champion Six Mile Bridge. Big shake up there in the Clare Hurling Championship. Yeah, look, and actually it was it was resounding enough in the end, kind of like the, that goal was nearly kind of to seal, to seal, to seal the deal, I suppose. And uh, they dispatched the Six Mile Bridge team that won two in a row and kind of went out with a whimper a bit. Like, I know Davey, Davey, uh, Davey Fitz is coaching Six Mile Bridge still and uh, he's had an awful lot of joy there in the last two years and they have some big, big names in the team, like Niall DC, Cotton Malone, Jamie Shannon. But uh, yeah, ultimately, I suppose they... Uh, they, they got resoundingly beaten that day. I suppose from the start, David Reedy hit an early enough goal for Aero. They never looked back after that. And by half time, they were 112 to six points up. And I suppose when you're in, when you're leading by that margin any time, you can be pretty confident you're going to go on to win it. And I know, look, there was a bit of a late fight back, I think, by Six Mile Bridge with Jamie Shannon goal. But uh, yeah, ultimately, I think that uh, Aero Grob was kind of comfortable in this game. And uh, yeah, just a late Shane O'Donnell goal will uh, ultimately, I suppose, seal the deal. 100%. And in the other games, then the Clare Hill Championship, Newmarket on Fergus, they won by a goal, 115 to 15 points against both Tones. And then in the other two, and then in the other semi final, those slots would be taken up by Ballier and Ina Kilnamona. So, which team do you kind of have your eye on to win the Clare Hill Championship from here? Yeah, well, look, it's again, it's it's interesting because I suppose the, the obvious choice is Ballier, but the thing with Ballier is that Tony Kelly is he's it's confirmed after the game that management confirmed the interview afterwards that he is gone for surgery he came on pretty much won that game for uh, Ballier by hitting the last two points in the game from the win by two points yeah look it's confirmed that he's gone for surgery now he's going to miss the rest of the club championship he's going to miss the National League next year as well so look they they're going to be without their talisman a key key player for them so it's uh, yeah look it, that's a huge loss for them I think that they were uh they would have been heavily fancy, fancy going in. And to be honest, I probably wouldn't be too confident backing them, I suppose, without Kelly. So, uh, yeah, look, I think the next, in the semifinals, it'll be Aero Oak taking Ina Kilnamona. I'm going to go with Ina Kilnamona to edge them in that. I think they've been very, very good since they the two clubs amalgamated. They both enjoy kind of as clubs of their own for a while there. So I think, like, I do think that they, they were very impressive beating Kratlow. So I'm going to go with them to, to beat Aero Oak. And then I suppose I'm going to go with just about with Ballier to probably get over Newmarket on Fergus. But ultimately, I'm going to go with Ina Kilnamona with a bit of a surprise to be my uh, my pick, early pick, I think, for Clare Champions this year. 
Yeah, I get what you're saying. Me personally, I still fancy either Ballier or I, I like the firepower that Aero Oak have up front. I think with O'Donnell and David Reedy, I think they're a threat to any team in the Clare Championship and indeed then the All-Ireland Championship. Those two are elite. So that's the Hurling wrapped up. That is Play On GAA Episode 2 of the Hurling Club Roundup. Luke, thanks for doing this with me. No worries. All right, guys. Hope you enjoyed the episode and until the next episode, take care.